Right, good morning everyone. It's really good to be with you this morning. Today begins our holiday club. You see, we don't start holiday club tomorrow. We in fact start holiday club today. And so everybody here is actually going to be part of Holiday Club this morning. And Holiday Club is something very special. For five days in the week, we actually get to spend time with children and young people and teenagers in, in ministry together. So it is an incredibly special week, and we are really excited about that. If you're joining us for the first time today, welcome. If you're joining us online, it's great to have you with us. Let's pray together. And so, Lord God, we thank you that we can come to worship today. We want to worship you and give you thanks and praise that you are a God that shapes our future, that holds us in the present, and that brings meaning to our past. God, as we begin a journey in this next week with young people, we thank you for the privilege of holding the gift of another before you. And especially this week, we pray for young people that will gather in worship, that will gather in learning, that will gather in fun, that will gather in relationship. We pray that we will never forget what it means to be free and to be with one another. And so we pray, God, that the gift of their presence would be a treasure for us this week. And so in worship today, God, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you as a family. We want to sing hallelujah and know that you are God. And so allow your spirit to be amongst us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, as we worship today, it is a service, an intergenerational service. We have the Gen now with us, the Gap Youth and the Children's Church. So it's a huge time of fun and kind of chilling out. So this is the Sunday where we chill. All right. So I'm going to hand over to Greg and the team as we get together now in worship. stand with us.
all of our days when we've gathered like this and when we go our separate ways God give me the courage to not be ashamed of what you've done for me Lord give me the courage to not just be bold here as we gather as your local church but give me the courage to walk this out every day of my life, Lord. Forgive me for the days when I get it wrong. But I know that you give me courage, that you give me strength, and you will lead me. I know that you will lead us, Lord. No matter where we find ourselves right now in this place, you know where we are. And you make a way, you made a way So we sing hallelujah to the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Savior, our friend, our Redeemer, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, Jesus. crown of thorns placed on his head he knew that he would soon be dead he said did you forget me father did you they nailed him to a wooden cross and all the world would feel the loss of christ the king before us hallelujah sing Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He hung his head and prepared to die, then lifted his face up to the sky. Said, I am coming on now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his lips and gave his soul to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soldier who had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord said, Truly, this was Jesus Christ, our Savior. He looked with fear upon his sword and turned to face his Christ the Lord and fell to his knees, crying, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you. 
from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown and laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet aside now in our hearts we know he died to save us from ourselves oh Won't you please be seated? And yes, Lord God, as we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. So we come to two scriptures now as we, as we just hold the words that we have just sung as we listen to the word of God. I'm reading to you first from Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 17 to 25 and then from Romans chapter 6. Be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so that it may go well with you and you may go in and take over the good land the Lord has promised an oath to your ancestors, trusting out all your thrusting out all your enemies before you, as the Lord said. In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning? of the stipulations and decrees and law the Lord our God has commanded you. Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land he promised an oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all the law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. And now we turn to the New Testament, to the book of Romans. And I read to you from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say? 
Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those... We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus? We were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For we have been united with him in death like this. We will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. So now we're coming to the holiday club song. No hats? Now, the holiday club song means we're going to have to move a little bit. Okay. Um, we want to show that we are alive and we're not the chosen frozen. And I want to tell you that this crew behind me is not the chosen frozen. And um, they're going to move. And we have a really funky song that we're going to sing. And it's really a song that, um, that you're going to have a sneak preview into Holiday Club. So let's enjoy the song and enjoy the fact that it actually says yes to being alive. Can we stand and do that together? Joel, are you going to tell us about the hats? So good morning church once again, we have our hats, we are all now part of the holiday club journey, we're traveling around the world, we are uh, going around with amazing ways, all different places, so the crew here, we're going to give you a taste of holiday club, this is last year's theme song, uh, and this is how we do, there's a lot of adults in here, all the kids, show your parents what you got, show them the attitude of holiday club, yes. and let's do it. Jesus 
Can you please be seated? This is serious. Before we go online, we need to make sure that you are briefed correctly. Now, audience, this is the pre-race show before Holiday Club starts. So what you need to do is you're going to see there's some prompts going to go up. Can we please just do a dry run and see if you can do what we have asked you to do? Next slide. Okay, let's see. No, 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 audience, we can't go live like this. Can we please have applause? Fantastic, well done. Can I please ask the contestants to come up, please? Thank you. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit more. <laughs> this has been a very trying time to get all these contestants ready for the show. Okay, so this is our 100th Amazing Grace around the world. Um, we will be um, racing it over five days. We will be going to five different continents um, where the passengers and the teams will be meeting different um, people from different races and ages. They will be experiencing different cultures and different traditions. Now, Phil, our host, is already at our first destination, but we can't tell you what it is because there are people on in here that is going to be passengers, so we can't tell you. But um, anyway, so he's already there. He's looking forward to meeting the team tomorrow, as well as all the passengers of Flight Grace 3. But we thought that it would be easier for you guys, because you know, shame, I feel so sorry for you. You can't come with us. It's only for little people. Yeah, let's all go, oh. No, 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 audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so we thought we'll just give you, we'll introduce the team, some of the team members. This is not all of the team members. So that you could just have a little bit of a pre, you know, just see what we're going to get up to so that you can be a little bit jealous. <laughs> okay, anyway. So on my left here, we have Amber from, from the US of A. Hello. Now, 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 Amber, can you tell the audience why did you want to do the amazing race, Grace Around the World? So some friends actually introduced me to Grace Point last year and to the Holiday Club. And when I heard the amazing theme of Grace Around the World, I knew I had to come back. And so I'm here. Well, Amber, I'm sure... So, Amber, I'm sure your team would love to be in the race on Thursday, the 4th of July. Absolutely. Independence Day. Totally so excited. Good, good. Oh, sorry. Anyway, so next to Amber, we have the very, uh, uh, yeah, um, Noah from Antarctica. Now, now, Noah, you're not looking so great. Or should I say you're not looking so hot? No, I am very hot. Thank you for the concern, producer Leona. It is just it's so hot here. They told me to dress for winter, but guys, I'm from Antarctica. It's a little bit different here. It's a bit hotter. So I'm just going <sighs> to... Could you maybe take your jacket off just in case you... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so, so you know what, Noah? Don't stress. During Holiday Club, there's so many crew members... 
um, pilots, even the passengers will help you when you're sick, you're scared, you're lost, you are shy, or even hot and cold. So do not stress. Okay. Now, next to Noah, we have the incredible Yosef from Israel. Shalom, Grace Point. Now, 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 yeah, yeah, Yosef, this is your first time, right? Yeah, yeah, this is my first time. I was definitely nervous coming all the way from Israel to my first holiday club here at Grace Point. But as soon as I walked into the foyer, saw all the amazing decor, uh, some leaders told me about the crafts, the games you're going to be playing. I felt a little better, producer. Oh, now, well, Yosef, from our side, shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom to you too. Thank you. Okay, and then next to... Next to Yosef is um, the, uh, yeah, the uh, Stefano. <laughs> Hello, Stefano. <laughs> now, Stefano is, um, is from Italy, um, from the land of pizza. I mean, Pisa. <laughs> He's from the land of Europe. <laughs> Stefano. Thank you for a lovely introduction, oh. Lee. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> yes. Italy is beautiful, oh. but South Africa, especially Grace Point, is lovely, and we'll look forward to Holiday Club. Oh, trust. <laughs> oh, trust. <laughs> oh, trust me, Stefano. I can't, I mean, we can't wait. <laughs> oh, sorry. Right, and then next to Stefano, we have the beautiful, amazing Tabisa from South Africa. Come on, South Africa. Now, Tabisa, you have done this before. Tell us. Tabela, what I'm doing. Hey, Kinnit, I get a letter. Lekker tijd gehad, en dat is van hoe kom ik eens hier? Especially because when I heard the team of this year, oh my gosh, it's grace around the world. Imagine, you get to travel everywhere and know that God's love and grace is with you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So, so to be so, how do I say it? Lekker, lekker. 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 Yeah, that is right. Oh, well, well, you know what? This is, this is just a little fraction for you to just get a taste of what we're going to go through. Team, I think it's time for a selfie with the audience. Are you ready? Let's go quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Let's move, let's move. Okay. Now, audience, this is your time to smile. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, Yosef, can we get this right? Oh, my gosh, Yosef. Okay, now, now, audience, you need to smile. I'm going to hold up the phone like this. Okay, are we all ready, audience? Are you smiling? Cheer, cheer. Oh, fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much. So, so audience, before we go, just a few little last things. Number one. Parents, if you still need to get your passengers on board, please come and see the crew and myself at the, in the foyer. Let's get them to fill in their little flight tickets so that they can be on the flight tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Secondly, if you would like to still sponsor a child or make donations, please come and see me in the foyer. And lastly, we have exciting news. Next week, for the very first time, we are going to auction or sell off all the decor in the foyer. Now listen, there will be no fighting. And I have to I've been told that there's already people that have booked their penguin. They've booked the material. They've booked the hat. So there's going to be lots of auctioning. Now all the proceeds of that, all the money that we get from that will be going to the sponsoring of children that we didn't get sponsors for for this week coming. So please bring your money next week. Children, go already. Go tell your parents what you want. And I will see you next week for the auction and the selling off of the decor. But now I'm afraid it's time for you to all go back to your classes. So Children's Church, off you go to Children's Church, Youth and Gap. We will see you in the foyer. Shlawny and Ilza will meet you there. Off you go. Thank you very much, audience. You were fantastic.
This is your captain speaking. For all you kids ready for Holiday Club, we are so excited. Grace around the world. We're going to be taking you to different cultural experiences, different experiences around the world. This Holiday Club for 2019 is going to be the best yet. So make sure that you book your ticket, you get your seat in the right place, and you join us on the 1st of July. Whatever you do, get your parents, get friends, get anyone else that needs to be involved in that. Make sure that you come along for a week that you will never, ever, ever forget. This is going to be a trip. This is going to be a journey. This is going to be a destination that you're going to absolutely love, and that's going to be stuck in your mind forever and ever and ever. Make sure that you sign up as soon as you can on the details given to you up on the screen or else outside in the foyer, there's a special sign-up desk for Holiday Club 2019, Grace Around the World. Sign up now. Get your tickets, get your reservation done. This is your captain speaking. Morning, church. A very special welcome to uh, those joining us for the first time today. Um, as we take up the offering, please feel no obligation to put anything in the basket. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are thankful that we are once again uh, having the privilege of being here at Grace Point to be with you. Lord, we are always grateful for your unconditional love. Your wisdom navigates us through many unpredictable circumstances every day of our lives. Lord, we are thankful for the daily affirmations, the armor that you give us daily to conquer the challenges that we may face in any given day. Lord, we are grateful for your faithfulness and your kindness and all the many blessings that we receive um, on an ongoing basis. Dear Lord, in this season of winter, we are most grateful that you give us hope, you give us shelter, you give us protection from all the elements. Lord, we do not take it for granted that there are those that need the shelter, that need the protection, those that are marginalized in our society, those that are living on the fringes of our society. Lord, keep us true to our responsibility. We know what we need to do to ensure that they are included in our communities. Dear Lord, bless the tithes and offerings. May they be used effectively and efficiently in strengthening the hand that delivers your work in our communities. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to our Sunday service. Let's have a look at what's been happening in the 144 hours beyond Sunday. let's take a closer look at what's coming up. Remember there are good quality blankets available at 70 Rand each. Winter is already here and we would like to get those into the hands of the needy. You can visit the information desk or website for banking details. You can do an EFT using blankets as the reference or pay via the Zappa QR code. If you have any wool at home, please bring it to the church where our knitting ladies kindly knit jerseys, beanies and booties for newborn babies whose moms can't afford clothing for them. You can bring it when you come to church or email info at gracepoint.co.za to find out how you can get your donation passed on to this amazing team of knitters. If you are considering becoming a member and being part of the Grace Point community, then contact Jean at groups at gracepoint.co.za. 
The counselling department are running a basic Christian counselling course on Saturday the 20th July from 1pm to 5pm and on Thursdays starting 25th July to 8th August from 6pm to 8.30pm. Anyone is welcome to attend for their own personal development and also with the specific intent of becoming a Grace Point counsellor. There is no cost, but a donation towards your material and catering would be appreciated, as the church does incur costs for printing and catering. For more information, contact Tanya Kruger on counselling at gracepoint.co.za or call 011-702-4600, press 2 for counselling. The next Woman to Woman event will be on Saturday the 3rd of August from 2pm to 4pm. Save the date and get ready as we'll be hosting Nikki Jones, the Women's Ministry Coordinator from Open Door South Africa. This is an organization that serves Christians around the world who are undergoing persecution in countries where Christianity is outlawed. All women of all ages are welcome at a cost of 60 Rand. Children under the age of 10 at a cost of 30 Rand to attend their own program. It often takes courage to worship God, especially when your circumstances are not favorable or you wonder what good it will do. The Bible tells us to worship God regardless of our circumstances, as He is the one who dwells in the praises of His people. Be at Grace Point on the 11th of July at 7.30 for closer, brave worship. If you are new to Grace Point or would like to stay connected, please scan the WhatsApp barcode from the seat in front of you. Alternatively, you can connect with us on our social media platforms, website, and Grace Point app, which you can download from the iStore or Google Play Store. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning, everyone. Could I ask you please to stand for our reading in the gospel, which is in John chapter 15, and I'll read from verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Would you please be seated? Let us pray. Lord God, our creator, through our savior Jesus Christ, you have assured humanity of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, would you agree with me that it is actually superb to be a Methodist? You really think so? It, it's a little bit better than being Dutch Reformed. <laughs> or is it much Reformed? Um, and what about the Catholics? Hmm? Now, I'd like, to, I'd like to maybe just ask a question. I do want to tell you that, frankly, it's a hang of a waste of resources. 
Methodist, Anglican, Presbyterian, Congregational, Lutheran, Moravian, Roman Catholic, Dutch Reformed, Uniting Reformed. It's a lot of money. And it is... Now, how do you think we can penetrate the divides? What do you think? Hmm? Pardon? Holy Spirit, yes. Yes, of course. But now I need to know, how would the Holy Spirit practically enable it? Pardon? Yes, through the saints. And I'm going to ask you the next question, which is, and then? No, 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 no. You're, gonna, you're going to get rid of the Methodist church. You're going to get rid of the Methodist church and you're going to make it one church. Let me just tell you that at the present, do you mind if I'm down here? At the present moment, the, the Dutch Reformed Church and the Uniting Reformed Church are sickling. And that's the right word. Really sickling. To unite. Fundamentally, they have, in terms of the foundation of their doctrines, no difference. They come from the Reformed family, and all the tenets of what they hold to are the same. Now, the uniting Reformed Church, and notice uniting, so it's ongoing. Uniting Reformed Church is a church that has brought two denominations together. That is the Engia Kerk in Africa and the Engia Senden Kerk. And if you want to know what those two are, basically the Engia Kerk in Africa is the Dutch Reformed Church, the black Dutch Reformed Church. And the Engia Senden Kerk is the colored Dutch Reformed Church. And the Engia Kerk is the, the white and they're having a hang of a problem. And do you know what the problem is? The problem goes around identity. If, as the Uniting Reformed Church, we are going to join the Dutch Reformed Church, what will happen about our identity? We have a way, a style of doing things which is different. The way coloreds and blacks worship is different to the way whites worship. Often, whites are prim, perpendicular, and taciturn. And, <laughs> you know, but let me tell you that as a Methodist, the whole Dutch Reform thing for us belongs to God's chosen frozen. Now, I want to say to you, we, had, we, we Methodists, Methodist, Anglican, Presbyterian, Congregational, are on a journey as well to try and unite. We got to the point at which we said there is a mutual recognition of membership. So if you're a Methodist, you can take communion in an Anglican church. You know that. You don't, have to, you don't have to have had the bishop's hands laid on you, which is really what happens in confirmation and makes you a member. It's different in the Methodist church. In the Methodist church, in actual fact, a person who is in training can confirm you. So we're very sloppy. You understand? The Presbyterians and Congregationals are a little bit more fussy about that kind of stuff. But we finally got, and do you know what the thing was that ultimately pushed the wheelbarrow through the, through the door in about 1989? So we're not talking <laughs> years and years ago. It's fairly recent history, 30 years. 
Well, what happened was that Desmond Tutu got sick and tired of the fact that we were struggling really about almost nothing. And said, if you're baptized, you're welcome. And so he used his power as the head of the Anglican Church to sign it into law. The Anglicans still struggle with it a bit because a, a bishop's hands has not been placed on you when you're confirmed. But you can go to an Anglican church. Now, why am I talking about this? I really am wanting us to talk about identity. And what does it really mean to be in the family of Christ? What is baptism? What does it signify? What is it about? You know what baptism is about? Baptism signifies the moment of being born into this body. And that can never be reversed. Never. So your identity comes from, if you can imagine, that first breath. Now, forgive me if I'm going to be a little, you see, I've never given birth. Damn it. <laughs> but come with me in your imagination, because you've all been through this, eh? All of us. So there's this basically shapeless mound walking around in a body. There's a huge amount of stuff that has gone into that, what can't be seen. A huge amount. In actual fact, there are many therapists who will say to you that even before you go, there is a relationship. Incredible. Incredible. And so there's this shapeless, you know, and then there is this excruciating pain and then a moment when <laughs> and that's that's all of us that was it now imagine that that's your spiritual birth that's what baptism is Baptism is the fact that there's a huge amount of work that's been going on before you actually opened your eyes and became conscious of anything. That, that exquisite song that we sang is about that, about the crucifixion and the humiliation of Christ and the perfect expression of sacrifice and love. All that has gone in place before you come to the place of, <sighs> yes. And, and, and it doesn't, it, no birth is the same as another birth. You know that. My coming to faith is not like, in actual fact, I'm still coming to faith. John Wesley grew up in an Anglican priesthood, basically. His father was a minister in the, in the Anglican priesthood. He trained, became a minister in the Anglican church, had been a minister for a long time, and on the 24th of May, 1738, at a quarter to nine in the evening, when somebody was reading Luther's preface to Paul's letter to the Romans, suddenly something happened to him and he knew he was loved. He knew he was loved. And can I, can I plead with each and every one of you that sometimes it's good to go back to that moment 
where you claimed for yourself, yes, I know I am loved. Jesus describes it in the most exquisite way in the vine and the branches. It's as if we are molded into this vine and we become part of the expression of God's love. It's the number one piece of our identity. So when you walk out of here, you walk out of here as an agent of God's love. And nothing, Paul says in Romans again, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. Powers, principalities, height, depth, nothing can separate us. And let's face facts, there are times when we hold on to that love, not being able to reason it into our understanding. But that is the moment. And that gives you access. That gives you the right. It's a little bit like going to a place and they say, can I see your identity document? And you give it in. And that part of that number is the fact that you have come to see that you are loved. Even when you cannot love yourself, God loves you. That's the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to say to you is I want to take you back to that lesson that Jackie read from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And you will know that the earlier part of that chapter, the, the law is given. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So in actual fact, that is the response to what I've just been speaking about, is being able to start in whatever way you can to love God back. But I want to say this to you. You'll remember that as she was reading, she said, this is what it said. Um, when your children ask you, what is the meaning of all this? Tell them. Tell them about Egypt. Tell them about your oppression. Tell them about your loss of identity. Tell them about, in other words, remind them. Remind them. So Christian people, you're a people of memory. You know you loved, but you're a people of memory. You remember things. And let me just say to you, in the Hebrew understanding of memory, memory wasn't like going into an examination, writing down what the professor had said to you and getting as much of what you can remember back down on. That's not what we mean by memory. When we talk about memory in the, in the, in the Hebrew sense, it is a reenactment of an event that took place many years ago as if it is happening right now. So for instance, so for instance, as South Africans, when we say, do you remember apartheid? Do you remember it? We go back and we relive as if in the present what that separation did to us. And you know, at the present moment, we're very much like the kind of, I've watched this in married couples, um, you know, when they stand in front of you, it's moonlight and roses. You know what I mean? And you look at them making those vows, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will, and to this I give thee my trust. And 20 years later, what did you say? 
a shut up man. And I'm being polite. You know what I mean. She looks at him and she thinks, where on earth did you get such an ugly body? His blue eyes become an in irritating inquisition. She has Botoxed her face until when she smiles, you can't in actual fact even see the crease of her eyes. She's even got a funny smell at times. Do you know what I'm talking about? And this magnificent, this magnificent thing, this magnificent apparition that stood behind you has become a, an, an unmitigated nightmare. You know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and that's where we are as South Africans at the moment. In many respects. I mean, it was a miracle that we got out of really murdering one another in 1980s, 1990s, in the early 90s. The transition, the honeymoon was so magnificent. Now we're looking at one another and there's very little that anybody can do in this country, in particularly the politicians, and I agree, that is right. You understand. But we have to remember where we've come from. Because the memory of Christ's journey with us sustains us. But it also does mean that we are not walking around this place thinking that we're in paradise and that Egypt cannot happen again. The reason God gives the commands that he gives to his people is because they are quite capable of doing to one another 20, 30, 40 years later what happened to them in Egypt. That's why we remember. We can be horrified by Calvary. But we better remember why it happened. It happened because of betrayal. It happened because of deceit. It happened because of fear. It happened because of political expediency. It happened because of all the things that bedevil us day by day. We remember. We remember we're people who have to come to this place and in all humility have to Maybe week by week say, oh God, have mercy on me for I have sinned. L just listen to this. I want to take you back into this passage I've just read. Now just listen. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Now, does anybody in this congregation have any idea how that verse was used in history? Anybody? Well, at the time of the French Inquisition, when the church had become powerful, when the church could almost not be distinguished between the state and the church, when we had got to that place, when our arrogance made us think that we couldn't make mistakes, when we had got to the place where the church in actual fact didn't care about the poor, didn't bother about the dispossessed, didn't give any thought to the marginalized. There were people who stood up and said, uh, 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 uh. it seems as if we've lost some of the essence of God's love for us. And an inquisition was set up in the church. And there was a way of testing whether you really held to true doctrine and didn't. And if you didn't, you were taken to the stake and burnt. And this was the passage that was used. So we remember our fragility. We remember that we are clay pots being molded and made again. Don't think, don't think for one minute that we have got through 
the difficulties that confronted us in 1994. I must tell you, um, Tuesday, two weeks ago, I was told about a community in Viennan. Now, Viennan is in KwaZulu-Natal. It's, it's, you know, I mean, it's a beautiful part of the world. There are citrus farms and all sorts of things. And I was taken to a citrus factory. And I was told that there were people that were being killed in the area. And I must speak to the workers. Over 300 workers gather outside with no warning for, three, for, uh, for half an hour. And what is happening in Vienna now, even right now, is that there are factions that are busy fighting one another. So every night you lie in your bed and you hear a gun or another gun, and you know that's another life. That's another life. That's another life. And it, what, where it comes from is from our confusion about our identity. Our identity does not come from us being proud little Methodists. In actual fact, we should be ashamed of the fact that we're Methodists because John Wesley did not start a denomination. He died an Anglican. But we've got to be very careful about the fact that we start thinking that our identity belongs to our gender or our identity belongs to our race or language or age or whatever it is because that poison ultimately drives us to justifying murder. Maybe, yeah, maybe not, maybe not murder in this sense, but murder in a way, I can kill you with my tongue. It would be better for you to die than to let, let my tongue unleash itself on you and me diminish you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? And so I say to you people, we're a people with memory. And our memory is not packed in a solid, in a solid closed jar. Our memory is a living thing that enables us to see. And in seeing and in analyzing, being able to make our faith relevant for now. And I do want to tell you, before, I want to depress you just a little bit more before I get to my last point. We are, we are that close to chaos as a world community, and even in South Africa. Even in South Africa. You know, I was in Grey, Grey Town. And I, so I, I'll say to a community, what are the concerns of the commu this community? And there were about 20 to 30 people there. Now, I have done these consultations all over the country. The, night, the day before I had been in Ulundi and I had heard the big issue in Ulundi is that there is a mine. The mine is the only one that's got easy access to the water and the com community in their houses have got to lug water in, you know, so that's a big issue. So I go to Greytown and I ask them, and you know what came out of Greytown? Just listen to what came out of Greytown. Greytown said to me, We've got so many unwanted pr uh, pregnancies. And the problem is that a young woman will have a baby and she has got no way whatsoever of supporting that baby. And so she just abandons the baby. So we've got abandoned babies all over the place. What does, what does that say about our nation? And I then broke them into groups. There was a group with the ministers. There was a group of older women. There was a group of younger women. There was a group of young boys, young men. And I asked them to speak and to, to try and resolve how they could sort this out. And it was the young woman who came up with the most profound insight. Obviously, you could see, I've never seen this in my life before, because young men always present themselves as accomplished and the young men 
were very vulnerable. The older woman spoke about, you, you mustn't educate children too early about sex. There's a time for learning about it. It reminded me of my mother. When she thought I needed to learn about sex, she gave me a book to read because she didn't want to talk about it. Well, when I, by the time I got the book and read through the book, I could have written the book myself. <laughs> so I gave it back to her and I said, I think you should read this. <laughs> and then, but it was a young woman who said, stop talking to us about how we've got to repair our lives and be careful and all the rest. Educate the young men. But I want to say to you, if that is what is going on in this country, we are in trouble. Now, I went to a funeral at the end of last year of a real saint from Durban. His name's Paddy Carney. And when we began the service, this passage that we read in Romans was read. And the cardinal came in and with his water and his robes and everything, he said th these things. If we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his death. If we are baptized into his death, we are baptized into his resurrection. Now, let me tell you that I have been a minister now for 46 years. And for the first time last year, I thought, yes, you're standing in the presence of death. And as Christians, you say, I want to contradict death. I am an agent of life. And that's the third thing I want to say to you. Today, as you walk out of here, yes, you will see the places of death. Remind yourself that you are baptized. Remind yourself that the purpose of your, your baptism is so that you can understand death for what it means in its finality, if that is what it means. And remember then that Christ says, I'm coming as a contradiction to death. You are agents in the face of death of resurrection. The most beautiful part of that hallelujah thing that we sang today was it's the thorns, it's the humiliation, it's the beatings, it's the abandon, the feeling of the abandonment of God. And right at the end, they come to the place that epitomizes death and they don't find him. Hallelujah. So you go out of this church today and you remind yourself that you are a living expression of resurrection. So don't be afraid of death. Go to the places where the church has made mistakes about trying to get together. Go to the place where politicians have manipulated money so that if they did not steal all that money, we would not have to have a single shack in South Africa. Go to the places of dishonesty within yourselves and say, I'm an agent of resurrection. Go to the place where your guilt convicts you again and again and say, I confess and therefore I am forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, by your Holy Spirit, form us again re-establish our identity so that the church is not just a place of performance, not just a place of dead memories, but is the place in which we transform and heal society. Your society for whom you gave your life. I really want to pray, Lord, that you will disturb each and every person in this church so that they may go from here asking themselves, how do I express resurrection? Is there someone I must forgive? Is there someone 
I must encourage? Is there a child that I have to take care of? Is there someone I have to nurture? Is there some place I have to bring friendship? Is there somewhere where I can heal? Dispel the impotence of the church. We pray, Lord, we pray especially for people who are in power. Whether they're in power in government, whether they're in power in economics, whether they're in power in education, whether they're in power wherever they're in power, in the church. And we want to ask that you will refine in them a love for justice and truth and integrity and humility and service. We do want to pray, Lord, that you would rid us of people who are so lustful in their craving for importance that they walk over the small, the seemingly irrelevant, and that they forget so easily. We pray for the broken, the lonely, the sick, those who mourn and ask that as you enfolded the broken in your love, they may sense your accompanying them in their loss of faith and meaning. We pray for ourselves. We don't know what this week will be. Journey with us in your love so that we may learn how to love you more specifically. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Friends, just as we conclude the service today, please don't forget to register your children for the Holiday Club. And really, the Holiday Club, yes, there is a fee to it, but if you cannot afford the fee, please, that should not stop you from registering your child. We have no doubt that we'll be able to sponsor a whole lot more children. Have a wonderful week. Join us in the foyer for some tea and coffee. And please don't forget that we do have people to pray with you if you have a sense that you need prayer this morning. Have a wonderful week.